Hello and welcome. I'm Chris of Films by Chris. That's Chris the K. Filmsbychris.com. There should be a link in the description of this video to my website. And if you want to support, there's also a link to my Patreon in there. Uh, but today I'm just going to talk about uh, backups. And obviously, if you watch my channel, you're probably someone who realizes that backups are important. Especially when it, come, when it comes to a Linux system, you know as well as I do. You can pop in a live CD and have Linux running on any system. And how easy it is to you know back up your config files. So really, if you ever trash your system, you just, you know, rm dash rf forward slash as sudo or root and you just wipe your system if you have regular backups not a problem at all i can literally pop in a flash drive or a cd and get my system up and running and it's usable while i'm installing stuff and as long as my personal files are backed up i can copy them back over and not only you know photos and videos and obviously that stuff is really important but your config files should be very easy to get your system back up and running and really you know, uh, I find so many people out there, uh, you know, people who say they aren't good with computers, they're very afraid of messing up their system. It's like, if it takes you more than five minutes to get back up and running, at least with a usable system, and maybe half an hour to an hour to get it all set up how you like, uh, then you're doing things wrong. Backups are the most important thing to relieve stress. You don't have to worry if you have backups, secured backups. Um, uh, of your system, of your personal files, because again, I can teach anybody, any of my friends, if they have a laptop, desktop, computer, um, you know, I can set it up so that they can plug in a flash drive. If they ever completely mess up the system, plug in this flash drive, boot, you know, and we can set default boot to the USB drive or to show them what keys to choose to boot from it. And they can have a live CD of whatever distro running in a couple of minutes and at least they have a usable system it may not be completely configured to how they like but they have a usable system and if their files are backed up they have access to them and they don't have to worry so I back up things regularly obviously I have certain folders on my desktop then I have scripts that I run I have my documents folder I have a video photo folder that I keep my videos and photos in and I have rsync commands that I just uh, literally I go to the shell and I type DB enter type in my passphrase and it backs up all my videos or that's all my uh, document stuff to my server and then I do um, uh, a photo backup or I actually have a shorter version of that I think it just uh, PHB maybe for photo backup and um, it backs up all my photos and videos there and I also regularly back up all my photos and videos uh, to different services you may or may not like that, but anything that I don't consider private goes on a YouTube account, a Google Photo account, a Flickr account, archive.com. You know, if it's not, if something I don't consider private, which I'm very strict with my private stuff, but I also consider very few things private. Um, when it comes to that sort of stuff, like pictures of my kids at the beach or on a carousel or wherever, if we're doing stuff in public, it's public, I don't care. But I get there's other people who are sick, but I like those offsite backups. So I automatically, anytime I take new photos or videos, I automatically drag and copy that stuff. So I have stuff on my computer, backed up to my server, on my little Pogo Plug $8 server that has a terabyte drive in it, and multiple other places. And then, once a year, I take all that stuff from that year and back it up someplace. And I recently talked about, I, I try to talk about this, you know, January every year because that's when I do that extra backup. So I always have my, my desktop backup, my Pogo plug backup, remote backups of other stuff. And then once a year, I put everything, I used to do it on a CD back in the day. Then I went to DVD. And then there was a year or two where I used a uh, Blu-ray burner. Uh, and then I found that flash drives had become so cheap the last three years or so, I just buy myself a 32 gig or a 64 gig flash drive. And yes, all my videos and photos fit on there. I do, back in the day, back in you know the late 90s, early 2000s, I tried to save all my original footage uh, of videos I did. So I, I did a home video or something, and I would keep all the original files. I might compress them down uh, to an MPEG-4 or something or an AUG file, but I would try to keep it. I don't do that anymore because who cares? Once I edit a home video and I try to keep my home video short because 
Nobody wants to watch a 10 minute video or a five minute video of your family. But if I go to Disney World or something, or I don't really go to Disney World, Medieval Times or something like that, I might do a, a one or two minute video. But if your home videos are longer than two minutes, no one's gonna watch them. But you keep them short, you can throw them up and share them, people will watch them. And it saves on your storage space. But yes, I can save, and I take lots of photos and lots of videos. I do compress them, but I save them all. And usually it's around 30 uh, to, I can fit it all on, on 64 uh, gigs easy. Um, but I take that, whether it was a CD, DVD, Blu-ray, or now flash drive, and I put that, another copy of just the last year's stuff, marked as that year, in a fireproof safe. Now, I do that. And I have, every time I mention this to other people, I always get criticism. CDs are horrible backup. DVDs and discs like that, they go bad after a couple of years. And I agree. A lot of the CDs I had back from high school, I go to Access Now and they just they just don't work anymore. And it's just, you know, uh, it depends on the quality. People didn't realize that a lot of the, the, the writable formats, you know, the quality may vary from brand to brand. I always bought the super cheapest. And now, now that I'm doing flash drives, people are like, oh, flash drives are a horrible way to back up. Those things go bad all the time. You have to realize that one, these flash drives, they're not being used regularly. I buy a brand new one, I copy the stuff to it, I put it in a safe, and hopefully never have to touch it again. But it's my offline backup. So my server and my desktop are constantly running. If I did accidentally uh, you know, delete my whole hard drive, I need those files somewhere else. And so I don't, I want backups that aren't on a current running system that are offline somewhere. Uh, so that's what those are for. And yeah, I really only do that once a year now, but actually I just started doing it on my Pogo plug. I have a second hard drive that every couple of months I R sync everything over that and then unplug it and put it in a different safe than the other ones. So I have two safes in two different spots, you know, in case my house burns down, uh, they're, they're supposed to be fireproof safes, but whatever. My point here is I get a lot of criticism for the medium I back up to, but my, what I'm trying to point out is usually that's the fourth, fifth, or sixth backup. So yeah, it may not be the best medium, but I already have it backed up multiple places, different hard drives, different locations. And what's the rule? It's 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 three, two, two. Is you have three backups on two different types of media. Uh, in two different locations. So you want at least three backups. Uh, you know, one might be on a hard drive and then you might have two on flash drives and you have them saved in different spots. But, you know, even if you're using, um, you know, uh, some sort of tape backup, like a tape archive to back things up, you know, that might not be the best way to back things up, but if you have multiple backups, hopefully by the time you realize something went wrong with one of them, you have multiple ones and you can make another copy, which actually brings me to another thing. Something I, I, I played with once when I first started using Linux, I, um, I went through with a, a, and the package manager and I would just install a bunch of stuff and just play with every program. And that's how I learned about a lot of the applications I know about. And one I played with once, but I never, you know, used seriously. There was a program Ah, it's called DV something, obviously. But if you had a digital video camcorder that uses DV tapes, mini DV tapes, which I, I had a couple back in the day, um, you could actually use it, hook it through to Firewire and back up your files like a tape archive to the tape on your camera. And you could have it set to display an image. I think by default, it would show, like if you tried to play that, that video uh, on the camera, it would show just a picture of Tux. But it was one way to back up your files, but also it kind of hide them in a way that people may not realize that there's files on there because they pop it in and it shows an image. I think you might be able to choose your own image too. And people think, oh, it's just a video of an image, but you actually had files hidden on there. And I played around with it. I never used it seriously. And you can fit a couple of gigs on a tape, but you know, nowadays it's again, cheaper to buy a flash drive. But again, I'm just talking now, kind of defending, defending my usage of different medium over the years. Media, medium, media, whatever you want to call it. Medium, medium is like uh, someone who talks to spirits, right? I keep saying medium, but media, different types of media. But the point thing is to make multiple backups. I don't care if you're using floppy disks, if that works for you. I actually was talking to a viewer of mine um, in, in an IRC channel years ago. I don't know, I don't remember the guy's name or if you're watching, uh, but he talked about how he was doing, there's a project out there where a guy kind of started off as a joke, but it kind of became a serious project at one point where you could use uh, print, your files to to paper, 
as backup. And it was kind of like, it wasn't just like printing text. It was kind of like a QR code, but like a full page of barcode stuff. Um, and I don't remember what it's called. Again, it was up on GitHub to where you can actually print your digital files to paper. And then later on, if there's a problem, you can scan those back into your computer and restore your files. Obviously, that would take up a lot of paperwork, but it was one way of backing stuff up, you know, and I suppose if it was text you were backing up, it was compressed. But yeah, I mean, if you have a text file and you want to save it to a QR code and print it out on a file and put that in your safe, you could do that. I mean, theoretically, documents... Uh, PDFs that aren't image PDFs and text files and I and like C CSV files if you export your spreadsheets like that you could theoretically back up all your files as, Q as QR codes print them to paper and put them in a safe too and then you can decode those at any time in the future and have those files back I mean when I said the PDF file I mean obviously you can convert anything to uh, base 64 and have a text format but that would be rather large um, but you convert your PDF files to text files and all that sort of stuff to text files and then put them in QR codes and you can have, you know, I don't know how many QR codes you can fit on a, on a sheet of paper. Maybe, I don't know, 50 QR codes. So you can have 50 files on a piece of paper that you can scan with your phone and get your text files back. Now I'm just getting into ridiculous stuff, but if you want to do it that way, I'm not going to criticize you that. I just say back it up in more than one place, you know, and use a format. Oh, use a format that is uh, going to be around in years. Um, I've mentioned in the past, back in the mid-90s, I worked at Circuit City, for those of you who are not familiar, because it's not around anymore. Circuit City was kind of like a Best Buy, if you're not familiar with what Best Buy is. It's an electronic store. We sold a bunch of stuff, you know, uh, we had a music section, we had a, a small accessory section and a computer section. But I worked there, and at the time, no one had a CD burner. It was something that you read about in magazines, but you don't have it, and I wanted one so bad. And uh, so I went, I actually worked as a uh, customer service associate at the front desk. This is back when I'm like um, 16 or 17. And I talked to the guys at the computer department. They're like, oh yeah, we're going to be getting a CD writer in. We're going to start selling them really soon. I said, you let me know when you have one, I will buy it. And every day I'd come to work before the store opened, walk over and ask them. And finally one day I came in and they said, oh yeah, it, it came in. We have one. So I bought it on the spot before the store opens and they only got one in. They, they only had one. It's not like we had a shelf of them. They had one and I bought it. So I'm pretty sure I bought the first CD burner in my town that was at least bought in town. Someone might have bought one in a magazine or something like that. But as far as home usage, someone going to a store and buying, I, I, I think I claim the title of being the first person to buy a CD burner in Naples, Florida in Collier County. But I went there, it was $400 uh, and I got somewhat of a discount. It was over $400. I paid around $400 after my discount for a two speed burner. I bought that thing and and I just, you know, started buying CDs and started backing things up to it. And so yes, I, I claim the title of having CD burner. So I had a CD burner fairly early on before most people did. And I used it all the time. And that came with some CD burning software. I got again this is back in the day I was using Windows. And you know, CDs at the time, I mean, now they can hold more. Uh, I don't know the max, 800, 900 megabytes. But back in the day, CDs, pretty much you're going to only get 650 megabytes. But it came with compression software that would compress the files, allowing you to fit, theoretically, one one and a half gigs or 1.3 gigs on a CD compressed. And it would split that up over multiple disks. And I did that for a couple of backups. And what a horrible idea that was because it was this proprietary software in a proprietary format. And you need that software to decompress them and you need all the disks. So I have a couple of disks that were backups of stuff that I have no access to because uh, I guess I could theoretically, if I knew the name of the software, uh, I could um, you know, get a copy of it and get a copy of Windows 95 or Windows 98 and get it running on there. But if any one of those disks went bad, the whole thing was lost. Uh, so I'm pretty sure those files are gone. So uh, I don't care what medium you use, media you use, I keep saying medium and I don't know if that's right. Media you use, but don't use something proprietary to back up your files. Again, don't use anything proprietary in general, but you don't want to be locked out of your backups years from now. Anyway, thanks for listening to me talk and I hope that you have a great day.